Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Heidi, and I would like to introduce my sister, Robin, who channels a group of spirits known as Athena in Truth. And just to get started, I would like to ask Robin if she could let us know how this experience came to be, how she knew that they were wanting to communicate. Hi, Heidi. Hi. Well, I was doing a little bit of breath work. I had heard about it. I had done it in the past and it was just a very simple, easy breathing technique. And some things started to happen, but I didn't identify them as being what they really were. That didn't come till a few weeks later. I would say what came through first was a lot of light language. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but a lot of hand uh, signals, mudras, uh, different types of body movements. My face was pulling every direction. And I even videoed it and showed it to my husband. I said, I have no idea what is happening here, but this is really strange the way that I feel like my body's being manipulated, but it never entered my mind exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Then I would say about two weeks passed and I was visiting our son in Fort Lauderdale and I was telling him about it. And then the same thing started to happen. As soon as I started to talk about it, my body started to move every which way. And he just happened to know, he said, if, if you're in there and you want to talk, why don't you come out? And that's the first time that the group spoke. And it was really a surprise to me. It was not easy flow like it is now. It took quite a bit of time to acclimate. There was a lot of sweating, a lot of kind of thrashing around. It was something that took a few months to really acclimate into my body. And it really took me some time to grasp it and I felt like my life was never going to be the same again because I didn't realize at the time, it seemed like my whole life was consumed about it. All day long, they were talking. My husband was asking them questions. They were asking him questions. It was like there wasn't a moment that it wasn't going on. So I started mm -hmm. to feel like, how am I going to do my laundry? How am I going to live a regular life? What is this going to be like? So I started to get scared. Yeah. Now what I've learned as it's gone on that they only come forward when I think about them. Well, of course, in the beginning, I couldn't stop thinking about it because it was so strange and new to me that I thought about mm -hmm. it day and night. I'd wake up thinking about it. And so there they were. So mm -hmm. now I know if I don't think about them, I can go through my day pretty much like anybody else and not have a lot of communication. And then the minute I have a thought about them, in fact, a funny thing happened. I was at a tennis gathering with a bunch of people that I like a lot, but I'm not known really well to them personally. Mm -hmm. And I just had a thought, I wonder what they would think about what it is I do. And then right away, I could feel the group kind of, well, let's ask them, you know, let me come out. Yeah. And I thought, no, that's not what I want to do. So that is where I've now really understand that if I want some peace of mind, just don't think about them. And then I can be Robin and not have to deal with that. Sure. So how would you say your family and mainly close friends have, have felt about them coming in? Well, I've been really fortunate for people like you, um, Dave, my kids, they're totally open to it. They all have a little bit of a spiritual background. They've all been interested in reading books about these topics and things. So it's nothing new to the family. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of close friends that I've shared it with. Um, some have taken it really well and others are a little taken back by it and are uncomfortable with it. So mm -hmm. I would say that's one of the points that I still struggle with. It's going to take some yeah. time to really be able to come out and feel like I'm not, you know, looked at as being crazy or, or be judged because people know me as Robin as one way. Mm -hmm. And this is like a totally different way. So I think they are very surprised. And some of them even want the old Robin back because this doesn't seem familiar to them. So it's something you can't really push on people. I understand that about it. Yeah. But yet I don't really want to go the whole time being in hiding because I think it has some really benefits to people and there's some good information. And the more I do this kind of thing, the more visible I'm becoming. So I'm just trying to work through that process myself, but it is definitely a challenge. It's not something easy to do. Sure, sure. So I suppose everybody's kind of wanting to hear what the group has to say. Uh, maybe we could get started by inviting them to come out and let us know why they chose you and why they chose now. 
<laughs> as you notice, yes, as soon as you brought up our name, Robin started to think about us and we are here. We want to make the observation really that we are uh, always here. There is no lag time for Robin. Some channelers have to take some time acclimating their body. They have to think about it. They have to hum. They have to uh, do whatever it is that they do in order to allow their group to enter or to occupy them, you see. But Robin has made the decision uh, from the beginning that she doesn't want to worry about uh, any energies or anything that would be entering into her energy field that would not be to her liking or approval. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she has given that job to us. It is why we are always here. We are always at the gate, we tell her. Uh, there are mm -hmm. a number of us. There is more than 10 now that have joined uh, this group of energies that are now transmitting uh, as one through her, through the one of Athena that speaks. Uh, she's decided not to name them all. It gets kind of difficult to say, ah, oh, so-and-so is talking and so-and-so is talking. What is a name really, Heidi? Uh, you have a child. There it is. Yes, you pick a name for it. It's the same uh, in the spirit realm, we would tell you. So it would be nothing sure. more than uh, someone making up a name and deciding uh, this is what the one will be called, you see. How right. did I get my name, really? Uh, Athena might be of interest to you. Uh, Robin struggled a lot with self-confidence. It is one of the things that drew us to her. We have said to humans before that if you want to interact uh, with all that is, yes, do it in your purity. Do it in your mm -hmm. childlike state, because this is the authentic state or the one that uh, the universe really likes to attach to. And on this mm -hmm. particular day, Robin was innocently, really, in her purity, asking why do I have this problem? Why do I feel a lack of confidence in most things that I do and feel as though I can't accomplish what I want to? And other people don't view me that way. It is like a view I am having just of myself, you see. And as yep. she put this plea out to the universe, I answered her, you see. Ah, I yep. threw back her head. Yes, she drew in a breath of air and she felt for the first time what it felt for a woman to be in full confidence. And I am what is represented as Athena, the god of Athena. Yes, um, and I am not going to tell you uh, that I was physically born uh, out of the forehead of Zeus. Yes, it is kind of funny an analogy, but really what that analogy uh, is signifying is that Athena is a woman that is powerful. Uh, she carries the energy really of a man in a feminine form, you see. And mm -hmm. she is really forthright, very powerful. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. very truthful. Uh, this is uh, also uh, in great agreement to Robin. It is something that she admires about us. So this is the energy that was attracted to her. We would tell you that most channelers are attracting uh, the ones to them that they are hosting. It has to be a match. It has to be something that is uh, in like energy or uh, enhanced, let's use that term, of the one that, that we are choosing to move with. And we find this to be a good union with Robin. Yes? Yes. Yes. Um, I know we've joked before about the fact that uh, every now and again, Robin likes to crack a joke or even occasionally have a have a swear word. And mm -hmm. your group is very much the same. Um, you guys welcome that uh, yes. as part of who she is. Yes, uh, we want humans to know, and it is one of the reasons we came to the earth plane. There is a little bit of dogma going on, even in your metaphysics, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. People got so excited with the opportunity of having something uh, besides just mainstream uh, religion. And we are yeah. not opposed mainstream religion at all. If you are in your love state, if you are in your joy and what it is you are worshiping, we are behind it, you see. But yes. we've decided that others decided that they really enjoyed this another, another aspect, this metaphysical uh, research and study of you being the creator of your life. And they felt very connected to it because they have a guidance system which uh, allows them uh, the benefit of knowing when they are hearing truth. Yeah. And, not, yes. and so, uh, but what happened along the way, Heidi, is some people decided ah, to say that you could not eat meat, to say that you could not have a glass of wine, Ah, uh, you could not swear. Ah, uh, you had to do everything perfect. And this is what we are here to poo-poo or to tell humans uh, it is not so, you see. A human right. is uh, worthy. A human is uh, loved. All they have to do is be an experiencer. It is why you agreed to come to the earth plane. And we are knowing as we tell this to you, it feels a sigh of relief. It feels pretty good to you to know that you have done your job, to know that you are worthy, to know that you are loved, to know that you are perfect in your imperfection, that you're here experiencing life from your point of view, from your individualistic uh, choice uh, in your perception of what it is that is put before you. And this is why you came to the earth plane. You didn't come here to be some character that people told you uh, you were worthless because you were not behaving in the way that they thought that a spirit spiritual person should behave. This is the thing that we have come to debunk. We feel that it was something that was really taking away from the learning and the teaching uh, that we want to provide to humans that you're not doing it wrong. You are here to experience. And we don't care whether you feel that you have done it perfect or not. You have done it. And in the doing of it, 
all that is has expanded because of the experiences you have had. They have become more because of them. Ah, oh, we know you. We feel you. Ah, oh, why do humans bother becoming characters? Why do they pretend to be something that they are not? Who are you hiding from? There's nothing you can hide from. You are the universe. You are part of it. And as you feel, as you emote, the universe knows you. What you are sending out is what you will be getting. You are perceiving life through this vehicle, this human, this tool that you are using. And the universe is feeling you as you do it. And it is returning to you a universe or a world that surrounds you that is the creation of you. Right. When you look at all the different uh, types of likes and dislikes there are in the world and the different interests that you know people have, you can certainly understand that it's there's a vast a variety of um, channelers that would appeal to each type of, of individual experience and people who are attracted to the way you present, um, it's going to resonate with, but there's going to be others that might resonate with a different method. And I guess the message in that is there really isn't a right or a wrong way to be a human or a spirit. Like you just have to be who, who you are authentically. Yes. We like to liken ourselves to you, you see. We're not all that different. We don't need the plate of food. We don't need the money in our bank account. Yes, we are not concerned how we are being perceived about how we look or what people think about us because we are not informed right now. That is the difference, the main difference between us. And in this uh, way, we are able to transmit or bring to you a perception that is quite different than when you are one that is in the body. When you get in this body with all of the bull whip, we call the contrast the bull whip, yes? Mm -hmm. When all these things are coming at you, uh, all these feelings and emotions that you are having, it is very difficult. It is not uh, an easy process that you have undertaken, you see. Mm -hmm. But we want humans to really understand that uh, just in taking it, uh, you are worthy, you are loved. Yes, you are expanding all that is, and it is what you agreed to do. And we want to keep repeating that over and over to you so that you can really get a sense that you can't do this wrong. Uh, the only way you can have a problem on the earth plane is you become the human, you become the tool, you decide, you judge, uh, you make yourself believe that you are not worthy, that you are lousy now because you have had an experience in which you did not do it to the degree that you had hoped you had. Yes. But mm -hmm. if you would just let go of it, the charge of energy just for having the experience, whether it is positive or negative, is going to expand you to the greater degree of what you have done. You see, you can't mm -hmm. get it wrong, except for when you stay in the negativity. Now, if you stay there, if you start to become the human, now you start to disconnect a little bit from that source that is natural, that is plugged into you, that is funding you uh, in your human form, yes? Mm -hmm. And then you are kind of on your own. Now you are stuck in these emotions. And when you get stuck in the emotions, the universe just starts to wash you with those. And it starts to regenerate over and over and over to you uh, situations and circumstances that are still yet similar to the thing that got you in that place to begin with. And what is it really trying to do? It's trying to move you. It's trying to shoot enough negativity through you so that you decide to drop it and move on. You see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so I think a, a, a good uh, topic that we could try to get some more clarity on right now would be um, unlocking your own keys. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't want to necessarily tell the world this is the way you channel because each person is going to have their own way that it's going to work for them or not work for them. So how would yes. you uh, advise people on how to unlock their own keys in life? Uh we feel the most valuable uh, tool that you have uh, for unlocking the key that is you is to be in your authentic state. And let us tell you why that is. There is not a human on the earth plane uh, that drops into their authenticity that is not received well in the world and well by the universe, you see. The universe knows you. The universe feels you. The universe uh, can feel and sense the reality of you or the authenticity of you. Mm -hmm. But so many humans decide that they're going to present a character to the world so that others perceive them differently, hear this, than what they really are because they are not in love of self. They think that they're not good enough. They think that uh, they have to do something that will impress others, whatever it is, the reason that they adopt this way of thinking. And then they decide to throw out this character to the world and everyone senses it. Everybody shies away from it. And then in the receiving of this type of energy, the human that is projecting the character now even becomes weaker, now even becomes more vulnerable because he is not being received the way that he wants to be received. And we say, be who you are. 
connect to who you are. Forget about the ones that do not align with you. We tell people all the time, you may not always agree with us. And if you do not, you are perfectly welcome to pick up your chair and leave the room, you see. It is your choosing. You are not here to be for everyone. You are not here to please everyone that you come into contact with. That is a ridiculous life that you would be living and there would be no pleasure in it for you at all, you see. You're here to please yourself. You're here to pick and choose what it is you are wanting, what it is you are loving, what it is that makes your heart sing. And then as you get into this happy state, you expand because of it. The universe expands because of it. And now you can start to receive some of these things that you are wanting on the earth plane that you have a desire to have. How does it really happen? You are having this desire and we don't care whether it comes from a charge of negativity because you are upset about something. The universe, you expand. And as you expand, the high part of you already gets the desire that you are wanting on the earth plane, but you want to get it here. You want to experience it in form. You want it to be a God in human form. And how do you do that? You have to raise your vibratory level to the level of all that is. You can't stay stuck in the emotion or the circumstances that have occurred and expect that you're going to connect to the thing that you have created. The only way that you can do it is to feel good about yourself, to accept yourself, to be authentic, to love yourself. We would tell humans the best way that you can manifest the life you're wanting is to really step into authenticity and to be that. Who do you know, Heidi, that uh, presents that to you, that it is not attractive quality to you? What happens is all of a sudden your key flips in the lock. Now you open up because you know you don't have to be perfect. This one has let it all out. This one has decided, here I am, like it or lump it. And guess what? Now you follow suit and do same. Right. And I think it is just human nature to feel that, you know, that is the way life is that if you're not doing something big or you're not aspiring to do something big and that's probably where some of these inauthentic uh people uh come into our experiences they just want to feel like they're something or that they're accomplishing something and i think mm -hmm. that what i've learned now is it's more important to try to be in joy even if you don't consider yourself uh, a very successful person or somebody who is doing a lot of things because just aligning to your joy aligns you to the universe. And maybe you could kind of share about the way you're being perceived by the universe versus the way you perceive it. Kind of give some clarity on that for people. Yes. Uh, there are many people who would look at someone and perhaps something occurs to them in their life that they feel that they are not deserving of. Uh, maybe they have an accident, yes, mm -hmm. uh, maybe something uh, horrific occurs in their experience, and everyone is gathering together and talking how they cannot understand how this thing has happened to this one, you see. Yeah. And we would tell you that no one knows the self mm -hmm. but the self, and the universe knows the self because it is the self. You are same. You are part of all that is. And mm -hmm. so this connection that you have to all that is, you're no stranger, yes? Mm -hmm. So you know you, and the universe knows you. But others that are knowing you outside of this may not be the same perception of what the universe is. The universe doesn't make any mistakes. It knows you. It feels you. It is reacting uh, to the emotional value or uh, charge that you are admitting to it. This is how it is supplying you with the universe that is you, you see. Mm -hmm. So there's no mistake about it. So even though you may think you know someone, you don't really. Only they know themselves and they know themselves and you can know them by looking at their life because the universe is a reflection of that, you see. Right. So when you see someone who has a lot of things going on that they don't want to have in their experience, you probably could surmise that they're not really in a line with their authentic self. Um, um, yeah. Uh, to some degree, we would agree with you, yes. And mm -hmm. we have talked in recordings. We do have a podcast. It is on Athena in Truth uh, on Anchor. And there is also uh, one on uh, uh, Apple Podcasts uh, and a couple other Spotify, I believe it is, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about this uh, particular situation. And there are people who come to the earth plane and perhaps uh, the blueprint that you are uh, thinking that has been pinned to you has actually been created by you in the life that you have completed. And then as you go on from that, uh, you, you pick and choose and you realign and decide, yes, what it is mm -hmm. that will continue on or expand on in the 
following lifetimes that you will have after the one that you are in, you see. Mm -hmm. So you may come to some conclusions during this lifetime, and there may be some things that you are very happy about that you have transcended uh, or risen above. And then there may be some problematic areas. Uh, so then you may, uh, in this forming of this blueprint, and you are doing it, you are choosing it, no one is placing it upon you, you are the creator of everything, uh, whether it be what you decide to live or have lived, yes? Mm -hmm. And so as you have this understanding, uh, then there will be others uh, that are in your soul group that will assist you in the uh, endeavor that you are setting out to accomplish. So there could be some challenges, perhaps, that you mm -hmm. came from. But we would say that you have this free will. You have this choice, really. At any point when you are living the life, even on the blueprint that you are on, you can choose differently. No human is condemned to suffering. No human mm -hmm. is uh, expected uh, to continue on with the blueprint that they are not in their joy or not happy with or have taken on uh, more than they are wanting to take on, we would say. Mm -hmm. So in this way, we would tell you that for the most part, if you see people who are in constant conflict, yes, or perhaps uh, having repeat situations over and over again, this would mm -hmm. be a sign or signal of what they are sending out to the universe. And that the reason for it is this repetitive uh, response from the universe is really to get their attention. It is reflecting back to them, to them, who they are, who they are viewing themselves as. You see, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's all about perception, Heidi. We're never going to sit before anyone and tell you, ah, you are right and I am wrong. And this is how all your wars get started, by the way. If somebody has an opinion or an idea that they are right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, someone else is wrong. Yes. But what we are going to tell you is that your perception is everything. And this mm -hmm. is what you draw your experiences to you. How are you perceiving the universe, really? Are you perceiving it as a place of love, as a place of ease, as a place of harmony, uh, as a place that wants to align to you and supply to you the life that you're wanting to live? Or mm -hmm. are you a threat energy of thinking, ah, oh, it's a difficult place to live. There are shortages. I don't know if I'll have enough. I'm afraid about my health. I'm worried about my money, you see. And then mm -hmm. the universe will supply you uh, with a universe for you, your personal universe, this is yours, yes? Yeah. Uh, that is that. We have talked many times about this universe that is you. Yes, we like to talk about the Earth being a planet and there are all other uh, things that are circling around the Earth uh, within its atmosphere. And then you have you and your universe and all of the thoughts and all of the experiences that are that you are having or have had in past lives and in present. They're all out there. They're all part of this universe that is you. They're all there for the taking. And what yeah. is the taking? The taking is all dependent upon the vibrational level that you are offering. Yeah. So what what is stuck all of a sudden all of these things that you have or are out there? Yeah, and the masses, by the way, if you've chosen into your universe as well, how you are picking, now you are choosing, and now you are attracting to yourself from that pool you have added. We say, why not? add something that brings you joy? Why not uh, get in a high vibratory state and start drawing in some of these things that make you happy, that make your heart sing, and that make your life feel the way you want to feel? Right. And I think a little expansion on that would be, you know, something that's been a personal struggle of mine um, is staying in a state of least resistance. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you're right about something yes. and you're frustrated, it's very easy to go into resistance. And when you're in resistance, we're dipping our vibration. We're holding ourselves apart from things that we want to manifest. I think that it really is true that when you make a decision to dis kind of let things flow through you, not that you don't feel a little irritation in the moment, mm -hmm. but it really helps to think, I'm just going to let this flow through. And I used to use the analogy of like a screen and mm -hmm. I would just pretend my body was a screen and I would just let it flow through the screen and out of me. Uh, and so let's talk about that resistance. Uh, it's a good what, observation uh, that you are using, uh, one that is very effective for you. What we tell humans all the time is we don't want you getting stuck in the human. Yes, this is your human over here. Uh, we are using yes. this as example. Yes. And so we want you to honor the human. We want you to know that you as a uh, experiential being, yes, as a part of all that is, is the same as everyone, by the way. Uh, yep. It is all coming from one thing, experiencing itself as all things. And you, as your one thing, are having preferences and choices, and you are making decisions in every moment of what it is that you want to add to your universe, what you like and don't like. And then yeah. all that is is communicating to you through the form of emotions on how you are thinking and believing in retrospect to 
what will be provided to you in the yeah. life that you intended to have. See, yeah. so we want you to stew with your human. We don't want you to make it wrong. We don't want you to deny the feelings it's having. We want to say, ah, oh, you're really irritated right now. It's okay. Yes. Oh, you didn't like that. You think that one is wrong. It's okay. Yes. You have done your job. You have just launched a rocket to the universe that you don't like what that one did and you don't mm -hmm. want any more of it. Why would you stay in it? Why would you decide to argue with the one and now become the tool and attract more of it to yourself? Why don't you just let the universe do, your, do its work? Why don't you just release it? Why don't you just let it go? As you said, let it blow through the screen and then let the universe respond to you with something you really want instead of hanging on to the negativity that created the charge and then bringing that to yourself. You have a choice, really. Choose. This is what your sovereignty is. It means you as one are as powerful as all you in your universe. You can choose. So all you have to do is decide it had an experience, it didn't like it, and then you have to move away from it. You have to let the charge go. Let the universe receive it and let it bring to you what you really want. If you stay in the negativity, you will become part of that pushing energy. You will become of that energy now that is out in the masses. And this is what you are fighting against. And this is where your vibratory level is now lost. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, on a global scale is a big part of the problem. We find right and wrong in what other nations are doing or what other people are doing. And we create you know, disagreements and wars, and it's a it's a tough subject to not get caught up in. Um, I think that more and more we're seeing a shift on the planet, I think, um, <laughs> where people are trying to let people be who they are and not let them be affected so greatly by it and to just allow. Yes. That, that's been a really tough concept, I think, for a lot of people. And something that is take it takes some time but it definitely makes a difference yes there are many in your world we would tell you that feel that uh pointing a finger or pushing against uh or enforcing something onto others is the way to uh inhibit uh we shouldn't say inhibit or mm -hmm. encourage let's use yeah. that word uh, growth or expansion. And this is not, it is the opposite, you see. Yeah. As you stand in judgment of another, as you force someone to do something, they are in resentment of you. Whether you believe it or not, they are not wanting it. Yes? Right. Humans are sovereign beings. They are all here on their own journeys. We are all interacting with each other and we are all part of the divine. But yes. you yourself have your sovereignty and you have your ability to choose and to decide for yourself what it is you are wanting to create. And the idea that someone else comes in and now tells you that this is how you're going to feel and think and do, uh, it creates a very uh, large ball of negativity. And this is what has gone on really uh, for a good portion of time time on your earth plane. You have had many people, and we would tell you even in your Black Lives Matter, yes, in this pushing mm -hmm. energy, in this reprimanding energy uh, that has caused a huge call to all that is to have this situation rectified. But as the people march and as they protest against and push against, and even the ones who are not racist shake their fingers at the ones that they believe are, they are actually creating more contrast or more negativity as they cling to it. Let mm -hmm. it go, really, and let the universe do the work from the desire that has been launched for this to move out of your experiences. This is the way it has happened. Uh, we would tell you in your sexualities, there are many, yes, that have varying degrees of interest in different types of sexualities. And what happened really? Those ones just decided to love. They started to adopt children. They started to show the world that they were worthy. They started to live their lives and not care what anyone thought about them. They started to think, pick up your chair and leave the room. I do not care. They stopped pushing against really. And the whole world opened their arms to them. They decided that they're okay. They're not uh, wrong in their differences. And what happened was, it wasn't that the world changed. It was the view of the one who was different that changed. They accepted themselves. They didn't give a hoot whether anyone else did or not. And they decided to live in their sovereignty. Hear this? Mm -hmm. Their sovereignty. They created their own freedom. No one did it for them. Mm -hmm. No one should ever do it for anyone. Right. It is yours to choose. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you and I have talked before about um, 
how how you know that you are in alignment and that is something that people probably aren't always in tune to especially if they're new to mm -hmm. uh the the concept of spirituality and and the god power within you mm -hmm. so if you are someone that is either new to this or or trying to figure out you know that you're in alignment mm -hmm. what's the best way someone can tell that they uh, are in aligning in an aligning position with their high self and they're moving in the direction that is best for their growth uh it does take a little bit of effort we would tell you we want humans to really grasp and understand that you need to be conscious you need to have some conscious awareness of the creator you are and the master you want to become what does the master do uh is the master perfect does the master never make a mistake does the master always feel good i would tell you he does not but he has awareness that he is the master and he mm -hmm. perseveres he has perseverance he keeps going out there day in and day out and he keeps releasing anything that is uh coming into his experience that is holding him back from feeling good he has mm -hmm. a negative experience and he loves himself anyway and says thank you for bringing that one to me to show me that i can clean this up a little bit yes he becomes this accountable machine he becomes this awareness this uh truth and this is what we would uh like to transmit or to communicate to you today is that the best thing that you can do is to give up the idea that you're going to be per perfect yes and mm -hmm. adopt the idea that you're going to be pure awareness Mm -hmm. in this awareness this is where the change comes from many humans will say i'm going to change i'm going to do the work i'm going to stop doing that by humming in the corner all day ah i'm going to do this and do that and then to their dismay and their disappointment nothing changes pretty soon they say i'm backsliding again and they start judging themselves and they are very yeah. upset with the progress they have made and we're mm -hmm. going to tell you that you're never the one that was making the changes to begin with the high part of yourself this connective source that you are a part of will automatically fund you and change you in an instant there'll be no work no effort for you to do once you get this realization once you go into self love let's talk about what self love is because robin would ask all the time what is it i don't think i do love myself i would like to but what is it and we're going to tell you here in a nutshell self love is loving the human for being an experiencer did we say anything about doing it perfect did we say anything about never making a mistake we did not once you adopt this the self love just flows into you and as this happens your human rises in its vibratory level and guess what when a human's vibratory level rises it meets its source and when it meets its source now the source can flow through it now the source makes all the changes effortlessly that these ones have been wanting that they've not been able to do on their own it's all there it's all available to you but you have to love yourself enough for what you have done and even agreeing to come to the earth plane and experience we call it the bull whip because that's what contrast feels like you're brave mm -hmm. enough to do that so yeah. accept that love that embrace that and as you do it you're going to rise and as you rise connect this is how yes. you will connect yes yeah yeah i think that people uh they sometimes have a idea of something they want to experience in their life and they are real positive and upbeat about it and then they try to hold that for weeks and then it dwindles mm -hmm. and it dwindles and pretty soon they're like this doesn't work i'm not mm -hmm. getting what i want yes. and there is a lot of past maybe things that you have in your your history that are affecting that that maybe need to clear out before you can you know be laser focused on it and uh -huh. it's and it's hard for people to hold that and they'll say i'm doing everything right i've been holding this for you weeks you cannot hold it as a human Heidi we have just explained right. right so once they get this awareness that they cannot you see a human is a tool a human all it has to work with is what is being given you see mm -hmm. and if it is not being given the connection to the high self it cannot have the funding that it is needing uh to complete the project that it wants to complete you see mm -hmm. so once you get this awareness and understanding it is why we use the description really uh you spoke earlier about 
humans thinking certain professions or achievements were more valuable or higher than others. And we would tell you that it doesn't matter if you're channeling like Robin, uh, if you are uh, owner of a dental office such as yourselves, yes, uh, or whatever it is that a human has chosen as their expression upon the earth plane, none of that matters. It is all a creation, a manifestation. You're not taking any of it with you. All you're taking with you is your vibratory level, your expansion, what you have become because of the experiences you have chosen while you are here. But we would like you to let go of the idea that anybody, anyone, hear this, is any higher than, better than, or greater than anyone else because they are not. And this goes for the spiritual realm as, as well. You can achieve a level of greatness to whatever your consciousness can hold, whatever you can perceive, whatever you can accept. You are divine. You are the same piece that everyone else is. And when yeah. you finally get that, you will realize the unlimited source that you are and your ability to create the life that you want and that nothing or no one has the ability to inhibit that other than you choosing to allow them to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, in closing, I think I would just like to ask the, the following question, and that would be what, what is one thing, one little thing that might be easy that you think would have the greatest impact on someone trying to like implement their best life? Like what would be the most important little nugget of information that you could offer that would help them get moving in the direction that they want to go? We think the most important thing is this understanding of loving your human for just being an experiencer. Because this wipes out all of the ideas of perfection. I can't do it well enough. I'm not high enough, I'm not good enough. We're telling you right now, if you draw a breath in the morning, you're good enough, you've done enough. You don't have to be something that you feel is impressive to the world because you are the same thing mm -hmm. as all those things that you find impressive. We want mm -hmm. you to grasp that. We want you to really embody that. We want you to know that every single expression of everything is all coming from one thing, and you are part of that. Mm -hmm. So it matters not what the contribution is. You are it, you see. Yes, yeah. So this was our first attempt at having um, a video conference between Robin and myself. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We would like to do more in the future and also, we would like people to be able to email in uh, questions. So my email address, if anyone is interested in the future of asking any questions, would be Heidi at AthenaInTruth.com. You can email questions and on an upcoming uh, YouTube video, we would like to answer some of those questions. So we hope you've enjoyed today and meeting uh, Robin and Athena in Truth, and thank you for joining us. Hmm. Uh, we've enjoyed this interaction more than words uh, can say, and we are grateful, Heidi, really, uh, for your willingness and expertise in coming on today uh, and assisting Robin uh, with this endeavor that she is on. Yes, uh, we do have a website. Uh, it is www.athenaintruth.com. There is more information on there about what we do in sessions and also about the podcast that we offer for free on a regular basis. We would welcome any questions uh, or any insights that anyone has to offer us. We plan to do this on trying a weekly basis. Aren't we, Heidi? Yes. Uh, and uh, we hope to hear from some of you soon. Good day. Thank you. Good day. So I'm back now in my normal self. That's how quick it goes. Well, thank you, Heidi. Um, I'm going to shut this down and we'll do it again. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye-bye.